In this video, we are going to discuss how to use placeholder blurring with the next image component. It's a great way to quickly improve the UX of our site, and it's pretty easy to implement. And we're going to cover how to add support for this for both static and dynamic images. So just to get started quickly, here I have the next image docs pulled up. And what we'll see is there's really two key properties of the component that we'll use to turn on blurring. The first is this placeholder property, which we can set to blur, as you can see. And the second is this blur data URL, which is explicit data on the blurred version of the image that we might need to pass into the next image if it can't automatically generate this, as we'll see in a little bit. So to go through this, I've just gone ahead and created a blank Next.js project, as you can see on the left. And the other thing I've done is I've grabbed a high-res image off of Unsplash for us to use in this video. And I've gotten this in a couple ways. I have actually slotted the image, the raw image file itself into the public folder, which will be acting as our static image. And I've also just grabbed a URL from Unsplash directly so we can try to load this in remotely as well and see how the implementation changes. The other thing I'm just gonna do as well for this video is I'm gonna go ahead and manually toggle this throttling feature in my browser so that we can really see the benefits of implementing this blurring from a UX perspective. So to get started, let's just go ahead as a baseline and pull in this image statically using just a normal image tag, just to get a baseline level of performance. So I'm just gonna go here into our main file and component and inside this main tag, I'll make a comment here first. So we'll just use the image tag for static image. I'm gonna throw this in a div and in this div, I'm just gonna have an H1 here, just label it as static image. So we know what we're loading. And I'll also add an image tag, uh, the source, and then alt as well. For the source, I'm going to import the image directly at the top. So I'll say import example image from, and I'll go grab this from the public folder, and I'll pass in example image dot source into this image. Hit save and we have the image loading in. Let's just do a little bit of light styling just to make this a little bit easier to work with here for this example. So on this div, go ahead and add some classes, flex, flex call, and the gap of four to add some spacing. On the H1, text Excel, font semi bold. And then on the image, we'll do some sizing. So width of 72 from Tailwind, given an aspect ratio of three to four and object cover. Okay, and now this is looking a little bit nicer and I'm also just going to add a final P tag and I'll call this the windy, not the windy, the windy roads of San Francisco. All right, so now this is a nice just little example baseline for this video using just a normal image component. So let me go ahead and refresh the page. You'll notice that when I refresh and with the throttling on on the network, it takes a while for this image to come in. And at the beginning, actually, you would have noticed by refresh again, is this place where the image is supposed to be just completely blank. So from a UX perspective, this is not great because it can confuse the user and say, like, why is there just random white space here on the web page? So it's not a great experience. So this is where a blur version of the image loading in much quicker can be very helpful. So now let's go ahead and do the exact same implementation but instead use the next image component and add the blurring. So I just add another section here for the next image. I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this entire div that we just made because we'll use it in a similar fashion at a high level. And what I'm going to do is replace this image tag. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna make a div that's gonna surround this image tag. And this div is gonna be used to tell next image how to size the image component that we'll add in a second. And this is because if you worked with an X image before, it can sometimes be a little bit annoying to work with because of it wanting to get a preset size most times for the image component itself, which in a lot of situations, you just don't have the exact size you want the image to be, right? To, to load on the screen because of different screen sizes and whatnot. So this is a trick I typically use is surround it in the div and then set the size on the div and then just tell next image to fill the parent essentially. So on this div, I'm going to give it position relative the same width 72 aspect three to four. So you'll notice these are the exact same as up above some of these classes and object cover. And then inside this div, I'll go ahead and add the next image tag. And this next image tag where you take a few props. 
So first the source, which will directly pass in example image that we imported above, give it an alt of image, tell it to fill the parent. And the magic property we need here is the placeholder property. And we'll set this to blur. Now, if I hit save, and if I refresh the page, we'll notice that the blurred image is already generated and it shows up pretty immediately. And then the image comes in as it can based on network capabilities. And let me change this title as well. So we know that we're working with next image here. You would have noticed that it took actually a bit longer for this image on the right with the next image to come in the full image versus the one on the left. And we can actually do one slight optimization here, which is this sizes property. And I'm going to pass in 30 view width. So what this property does as I hit save and we can watch it load is it tells next image essentially ahead of time, hey, this is going to be the size of the image you actually need to pull from the server. Nothing bigger needs to be loaded in. And especially in situations where we know the image is going to be on a smaller size, we can essentially tell the next image ahead of time, like, hey, we don't need to load in the full size high res image ever. You can just load in something that is of size 30 view width in this case for the width. And this especially helps because otherwise by default, it will load in the full res image. And if you have a super high res image, that's pretty large, that can take a while. So let me just refresh the page one more time so you can watch this. Now it comes in much faster and of course the blur comes immediately, which is much better to UX. All right, so this is for a static image, but now what if we want to load an image remotely from any arbitrary URL and still have this blur effect? Now let's just try to set this up by just swapping in the source prop here with a URL. So let me go ahead and copy this one more time and I'll just relabel this. This is gonna be a dynamic image. And let's go ahead and just swap the source for this remote URL that I have grabbed up here. I'll hit save and refresh the page. And what we'll notice is we now get an error actually. And it says this image with the source that we're passing in has placeholder blur set, yes, but it's missing this blur data URL property. Now, why is this? Well, typically what happens is when the page is being built by the Next.js server on the back end, typically if you pass in a static image, it knows what the static image is ahead of time and therefore can automatically build in and determine what the blurred version of the image should be and can just automatically deal with that for you and load it in for you. But in the case of a remote image, Next.js doesn't have that visibility ahead of time because it needs to load it on demand essentially and therefore doesn't have the ability to figure out what the blurred version of the image is and therefore asks you to explicitly essentially provide what the blurred image should be and would then put that up. So how do we get this blurred data URL property? So for this, we're going to use a third party package called placeholder. And this will allow us to pull the image from a remote source and generate the blur data required for next image. So let's first go ahead and set up this new package. I'm going to stop the NPM server for a second. And we need to install a couple packages here. So first we're going to install the package itself, which is called placeholder, but spelled with an I. And the second package we'll install is a plugin from placeholder for Next.js. So for that, we'll say npm install at placeholder slash next. And let me go ahead and just rerun the server now. So we've installed the package. Now we need to pull this into our next config file here. So let me pull that up. And here in the next config file, we're actually going to do a couple of things. The first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set up next to allow for a remote image to load at all in the first place. And by default, this is a restriction for security purposes, but there's a way to override it here. So here we just need to say next config images, remote patterns, and we can say we can allow things on the HTTPS protocol and from the host name specifically of images, the unsplash.com. So this will allow any remote images to load in. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing now is we need to actually configure this placeholder library that we pulled in. So to do that, we're going to first import with placeholder from this placeholder.next. So this is the plugin that we installed. And then at the bottom here, instead of doing module exports equals next config, I'm going to say export default with placeholder and wrap the next config in that. 
So this will configure next to be able to use placeholder. Now there's actually one other thing that we need to do here that's a little bit subtle. And that is we actually need to change the extension on next config from JS to MJS. Now I won't get into the nitty gritty of this, but effectively it comes down to using module based imports versus common JS imports in JavaScript. And for some reason, the placeholder library only supports explicitly module imports. Okay, so with all that, we have updated the next config file to use placeholder. Let me just run the server again that we've updated the config. All right, so then we can now use this placeholder library to generate the blurred image. Now, because there's gonna be a little bit of logic, what I'm gonna do is create a new component. So I'm gonna make a new folder for components. And in here, I make a new file, call it dynamic blur. Use the Emmet shortcut to generate a new component. Can hide this. First thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and copy for now this div we have. Paste it here. And we've got some imports we gotta do. Let me grab the import for next image. And the other issue it's complaining about is it doesn't know what this remote URL is. So for that, we are going to explicitly tell the props of this component. So we have functional component, it will be, we'll call it source and it will be a type string and we'll destructure the props and then we'll just swap it in here. And then finally, we will just replace and pull in this dynamic blur component and say source should be remote URL. So if I load this now in, I should actually get the same exact behavior as before. And as you can see here on the left, we're still getting the same error as expected with the blur data URL property missing. So now let's go ahead and actually configure this property. So for this, we are gonna do a couple of things. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to get the image from the URL that's provided and then pass that into the placeholder library to generate the blurred version. So because we are using server components here, and the app router for Next.js, we can directly use server functions like fetch directly in the component itself. Now, if you were still using this in a client component or you have to use it in a client component, of course, you could just throw this into a use effect if you needed to, but here we're just gonna use the simplicity here of using the server components. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the image buffer or the data, and here I will await fetching the source. Then I will take the response and return and we'll say buffer from await res dot array buffer. So this is just getting essentially the image data. And because we're having an await statement here, we need to make this entire component async as well. So now we have the image data. And so now we need to actually convert it into the blurred data. So for that, we can actually just say const and I'm gonna extract out something called the base64 property. And we just have to say await get placeholder, and then just pass in the image buffer. And now base64 is the image data for the blurred image. So now all we need to do is we need to come down to the image component here, and we need to add this blur data URL property that Next kept complaining about, and we can just pass in the base64 image data that we generated. And now when I hit save, you can see the blur is now actually showing up for this remote image. It's still loading in pretty much at the same rate as a static image, which is pretty impressive. Let me go ahead and refresh that one more time so you can see it. So with that, we've covered the basics of using placeholder blurs with next image. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. And beyond placeholder blurs, next image has a lot of other great benefits. I dove into some of the other key performance benefits in this video on screen now, which you can check out, and I'll see you in the next video.